Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video in the Spring series. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to do dependency injection using Spring with annotations. All right, we made a lot of progress in this series so far. We know how to do basic inversion of control using the Spring framework and how to create beans. So now I'm going to show you how we can inject those beans using the Spring framework because what we've been learning about so far, the big thing is dependency injection and inversion of control. Now we get to the cool part, which is dependency injection, which you're going to be using on a daily basis whenever you create Spring projects, okay? So uh, let's see, we have a little diagram here. It's very, very basic looking, but uh, essentially we know that the Spring application context is going to manage beans, right? It's going to keep the beans within the application context. So let's say that we have a client class and that client class has a dependency and that dependency is also a dependency, a bean itself too, right? So both of these classes here are going to be beans within the Spring application. So when Spring goes to create this client bean here and initialize it and instantiate it, it's going to notice that it has a dependency. So it's going to go looking for that dependency and it'll notice that the dependency is a bean itself. So it's going to take that dependency bean and then inject it into the client bean. So there's different ways to inject this. There's constructor injection, there's property injection, there's setter injection. We're gonna learn all of them, all the different type of, types of injection using very various methods like XML, Java configuration. But the idea here is really cool, is that because Spring is going to create this client bean here, it'll know that this client bean requires a dependency bean. So if it has that dependency bean, it'll automatically put it into the client bean as its required dependency. It'll plug it in, it'll inject it for you using dependency injection because up to this point we've had to do all of our dependency injection ourselves we've had to pass it into the constructor using manual constructor injection so what we're going to do this episode is show you how to do uh, constructor injection using the spring framework so it'll do all that for you okay okay so i'm going to make a new spring project here this will be the last time i show you how to create a spring project for this first part of the series just because it's going to get repetitive so it's a very simple process so let's go ahead and do this but when we get into more advanced stuff like learning how to use the other modules of spring like spring web and stuff like that i'll show you how to do it again because you have to uh, add it as a starter and all that so anyway so the name of this project will be uh constructor injection annotations and uh, this is because we're going to be using java annotations to achieve constructor injection using the spring framework there's different ways to do uh, injection. There's XML configuration. We'll see that as well, but this is like the, the most popular way to do it at the moment, I believe. So annotations, and they're way easier to use and learn. So anyway, we're gonna set the group here. So me.cody Simpson. Okie dokie, looks good to me, Java 16. All right, good. We don't need any dependencies, finish. Okay, so I'm going to use a new setup for this just because we've been using the restaurant and food service setup for a little bit now. So I just want to give you a fresh example um, to go ahead with. So we're going to create a new Java class. It's going to be called Arcade Service. So this will be a simple service that, you know, is for, we can just imagine it's for an arcade and it's going to have just various methods to do stuff that an arcade might do. It's just really, it's just purely an example. It doesn't matter at all because realistically, you're going to have lots of code, not just, you know, as simple as we're going to do it. So anyway, uh, this arcade service will have a few things. It's going to have a dependency uh, game provider service, private game provider service. So this game provider service dependency will provide the game that the arcade is using let's just imagine that our arcade arcade only has one game for some reason maybe they're broke and they can only afford one game but so we'll just pretend that's how that works for now so we'll do we'll create two methods here we're going to have public void start game we're going to start the arcade game so we're going to do s out this well actually we don't have the code yet obviously right but we're going to have another method here public void uh, stop game and we'll fill that in in a second and so, like I told you before, this episode I'm going to show you how to do constructor injection using uh, Spring Framework. So let's go ahead and create a constructor here for it to be injected into. So public arcade service, game provider service, game provider service. It's obviously red because we don't have that class yet. And then this dot game provider service is equal to game provider service. So what we need to achieve is we want to try and get Spring to inject whenever this bean is created the game provider service into the constructor of this class here 
whenever the object is being created so that the dependency will be set and therefore we can call the methods provided by the service here within our methods of the arcade service. So just very, very much the same thing as we've seen last episode, uh, just with different methods and names and stuff like that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create our game provider service. So you can hover over this and do alt enter and do create class game provider service. There we go. And did I annotate this with service? I did, okay, so this will be a service itself. Um, let's go ahead and remove this for now and I'll show you why in a second. Uh, so game provider service is gonna have a simple method, public void get game to play. So very, 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 very basic example. All we're gonna do is return, let's return a string. We're just gonna return the name that the, the arcade is using currently. The game so world of warcraft is what the arcade is currently playing in this implementation here so we know that this game provider service is going to be a bean we want it to be a bean so then it can be injected into the arcade service so we can either annotate this with component or service you can do other annotations like even controller but of course in this example it makes more sense to do it as a service because it is a service so this uh provides the proper intention this is a service so you annotate with service it makes more sense okay Anyway, so now we have a game provider service, so we can go back to our arcade service where that is used and do uh, start game inside of here. We can do this dot game provider service dot get game to play. And we can say, so World of Warcraft has, or we can say is being started. Okay. And then very similar here, we can do game provider service dot get game is being stopped. Okay, like I said, this is a very elementary example. Obviously in a real world application, you're gonna have much more code than this. It's gonna be much more complex. But just for the just for the purpose of demonstrating to you uh, dependency injection, this is a great example, okay? You just have a client class, which is our arcade service, and then, and then you have a dependency class, which is game provider service. Okay, so let's see how we can inject this into our uh, class here. So let's go back to our main class here and try accessing the arcade service first of all so we can try running the code to see what happens so we're going to do application context context is equal to spring application dot run make sure you uh, import application context there we go so now we can make a new instance of arcade service so we'll do arcade service arcade service is equal to context dot get bean and then of course we saw last episode how we can obtain a bean through either its name or the type so we can do arcade service dot class all right, so try and guess what is wrong here. We're trying to access a bean from the Spring application context, but but arcade service is not even a bean. So we're trying to access something that is a bean, but it's not a bean. So it doesn't really make any sense. So if you try running this, we're gonna get an error here because arcade service is not a bean. Look, it says exception in thread main org framework factory, no qualifying bean name bean of type. Uh, constructor injection annotations dot arcade service so obviously what that just means is that there is no arcade service uh, class that is annotated with a bean annotation so it doesn't know so it can't find an arcade service bean for you to have so we can go back to arcade service now and then annotate it with at service okay and so now if you run this it will work with no exceptions There we go. Looks good to me. All right, so how do we now do dependency injection, constructor injection to be exact? Like I told you before, there's different types of injection. Uh, you can do property injection, constructor injection, setter injection, you know, stuff like that. But in this episode, we're going to do constructor injection. So what we have here is we have this field here that is private, but we also have the constructor. And we want the dependency to be passed in by spring into the constructor when this bean is initialized so that the game provider service dependency uh, field here will be set. So all we have to do here is go above the constructor and do at auto wired. And this will tell spring you want the uh, game provider service dependency to be provided into the constructor when this bean here is created. So it will auto wire the dependency of game provider service into the arcade service. And that's all you got to do. Spring will do the rest. And uh, you can also just set this to final, by the way, if you want to be more, uh, I guess, precise. It doesn't really matter. So now let's go back to our main class here and try calling it. So arcade service dot start game. And let's see what happens when we run this. There we go. So we get World of Warcraft is being started because in our game provider service, World of Warcraft is the game that is returned. And then we can also do arcade service dot stop game. 
and we'll see the stop message too. There we go. So we get World of Warcraft is being started. World of Warcraft is being stopped. Awesome. So now this is uh, that's how you do constructor dependency injection using the Spring Framework. All you need to do is create the uh, constructor for the injection to happen with and just put auto wired above that and uh, it will do the rest for you. But also you need to make sure that the, the class that is using the auto wiring um, is also a bean itself. That's why we annotated this with service. It's another reason we annotated this with service. One reason, of course, is so that we can access it from the application context within our main here, but also because we're doing uh, constructor dependency injection, auto wiring, we have to make this a service itself or not a service, a bean itself, because um, obviously it won't know to inject anything if it's not a bean. So Spring is managing this class here for you, so it'll inject it when it's needed. So otherwise this auto wired annotation will be ignored because this this class here is not being picked up by Spring, therefore nothing will be passed in as a uh, dependency. So hopefully that makes sense. A very simple process. Hopefully you understand it. Hopefully I explained it well enough for you guys. So that's how you do very, very easy uh, dependency injection, constructor dependency injection using the Spring framework. And in the next episode, I'm going to show you how to do another form of dependency injection using Spring, either property injection or setter injection. So stay tuned for that. Okay. All right. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. In the description below, I'll leave a link to the code for this episode so you can check it out. You can bookmark it, come back to it later. If you forget any concepts or you just want to review the concepts I taught in this video, I'll mark everything up with comments so you can come back and read the code without having to rewatch the video, although your reviews are greatly appreciated. So yeah, I'll leave a link for that in the description below, so make sure to check it out. And another thing is I'll leave a link to our Discord server. It's a big community for programmers. You can ask for help on your programming projects if you're stuck on something, or maybe you can get some new friends. If you don't have any friends, there's lots of people here. It's growing really fast. You can, get, uh, you can find lots of people who are passionate about the same things as you. For example, if you like Minecraft uh, spigot development, uh, you can find people, lots of people who like that. If you like C++, you like Java, if you like web development, it's a really, really big programming community. So uh, feel free to join. There's a link for that in the description below. And the last thing I want to tell you is that if you want to support this channel, you, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month. And you can cancel at any time. You get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, a cool rank on my Discord server like you see right here on the side, YouTube members. And also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. If you don't want to, that's fine. If you can't, that's okay too. Um, I really just uh, appreciate you watching the video anyway. And uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.